So, three, two, one, go! Hello everybody, here is Rubio and uh, there is a new episode of Hackademia Podcast where our goal is to make complex ideas simple. Today I have, uh, in today's episode, we are going to have Daniela Dimitri, candidate at, uh, co PhD candidate at Open University, also a master in artificial intelligence, and last but not least, I am a professional in multimodal learning analytics. <sighs> Don't you know what it is? Well, uh, you can just think about robot that is helping you with learning a new task. How cool it would be that? And so, pleasure to meet you, Daniela. Pleasure to meet you, Rubio. And uh, since it seems like you're in the field for a really long time, I want to hear the story. How, how has it started? So, hello, Rubio. First of all, thank you for inviting me to the Academia podcast. Um, I was born in the city of Bari, uh, located in the south of Italy. And to make people understand my passion, uh, I usually say that my mother was a teacher and my father was a computer engineer. So in my job, I try to combine both passions somehow. And uh, in the past, I was involved in uh, different educational NGOs concerned how to improve the education. Uh, on the other side, I also decided to study computer science and uh, worked as a webmaster um, when I was younger. So I always had a... Um, the interest in digital technologies and in programming. And in my bachelor thesis, I decided to focus on learning analytics and, and realized that to specialize in this topic, I needed to study artificial intelligence. And that would have been only possible outside of my country because it was 2014 and artificial intelligence wasn't so big in the news. Uh, that led me to choose the master program or in artificial intelligence at Maastricht University. And so I moved to the Netherlands uh, in Maastricht, uh, the city where I live right now. Uh, and I started my studies uh, in artificial intelligence. And I found uh, that's a very interesting and very challenging topic. Uh, but I really like that. And I really like the structure of the program, that uh, it's intense, but also allows, it's flexible, allows you on the second year to uh, shape it uh, as you want it. And I, the second year I did first an internship at IBM in Amsterdam. And after that, I started a research collaboration with the Open University in the Netherlands, which is the university where I work right now. Um, uh, there I started uh, in 2016 as a PhD student. Um, and uh, I am, Nowadays, a third-year PhD candidate at the Open University. The Open University is a university located in the city of Herlen, which is 20 kilometers uh, far from Maastricht. And uh, there I uh, focus on multimodal learning analytics uh, in the research department of technology and advanced learning. Yeah, speaking about multimodal learning, because I have to be honest with you, when I first heard uh, multimodal learning analytics, I thought, that sounds super smart. I didn't understand a single word out of it. So for now, of course, I made my research today. But if you're des describing it to your mother, or let's say, may maybe your mother will like to hear what you like to say. Let's say you're describing me to I am your aunt. We are at family meeting. Go. OK, but for describing it, uh, we'll probably describe it uh, word by word. Um, so analytics. Uh, is the collection and analysis of data of a certain phenomenon. And learning analytics, we refer to the collection and analysis of data concerning educational activities with the aim of improving these activities. And some example can be classroom interactions or individual learning or group interactions or even learning at the workplace. Um, Multimodal learning analytics instead is a research area that focuses on the collection and the analysis of learning data uh, coming from multiple modalities. So while traditional learning analytics focus on uh, click streams or keystrokes uh, where the laptop is used as a main medium for study, the multimodal uh, learning uh, analytics community looks at the interaction of the learner with the physical world. 
And uh, um, to do that, he uses uh, wearable sensors and Internet of Things devices uh, that capture the body movement and also uh, physiological information and uh, environmental data and any other type of information that can describe the learning process. Oh, so it's not only seeing what I'm reading, but actually I'm, how I'm moving. Well, so for example, would it be possible to using multimodal learning analytics to, for example, train pilots? Uh, for sure, uh, multimodal learning analytics uh, can be used in uh, simulations uh, and uh, because it gives you a much more immersive uh, uh, feeling of learning how to do a practical task. Um, and that's, I think, where multimodal learning, uh, multimodal learning analytics work best. Um, so, for example, a colleague of mine developed a presentation trainer uh, which allows uh, using a depth camera uh, to measure the body posture and uh, give feedback about the different features of the presentation, such as, for example, the talking speed or the pauses or the body position. And uh, um, other scenarios where we can apply, where we have applied multimodal learning analytics is how to write, for example, in a foreign alphabet. Think, for example, how to write Chinese. Ooh. You don't know how to do that, but uh, you, with an intelligent tutor using uh, multimodal learning analytics, uh, you, you probably can uh, learn this. And um, that just writing in a, in a foreign alphabet requires coordination of specific motoric movements. And, uh, and that is uh, also needed when you, for example, you, you want to be a pilot uh, or also for uh, other kind of simulations. Um, we have, for example, um, I had another ex uh, use case of uh, training how to do uh, cardiopulmonary resuscitation with the patient mannequin. So that's another example of medical simulation. Okay, I can see broad application. I can train pilots. I can train how people make CPR or observe how they progress in their learning process. And do you have a good example of where I cannot learn using the multimodal learning? Um, other example where you cannot learn are probably more cognitive uh, tasks uh, where okay. you don't need to train a specific uh, motoric skill but you probably need to uh, like understand and learn a concept or uh, uh, higher level uh, cognitive skills like critical thinking and uh, uh, decision making these are uh, learning activities that are not so evident from the sensor point of view uh, so that I find a bit more complicated uh, with the uh, so multimodal learning analytics. In theory, you would be able to train the pilot of the uh, plane that is traveling, but you will be not able to train, I don't know, a tax lawyer to do his job using your, your method. Do I get it right? Um, I think, and I never said this is not going to be possible. I just say that this is... Uh, uh, for sure a bit more complex uh, because uh, if um, repairing a machinery for example it's a, it's a practical task where the movements are more uh, evident uh, a tax uh, a lawyer needs to have uh, skills uh, that are probably more high level and uh, uh, requires uh, to train certain skills that are not so uh, easy to reach. But uh, probably one day it will, we will be able to, to track all these different uh, higher level cognitive skills uh, we, uh, we don't with know. beautiful artificial intelligence. <laughs> yeah, speaking of which, uh, are you using artificial intelligence in multimodal learning analytics? Um, so yes, we use artificial intelligence because learning analytics uh, in learning analytics, we assume that uh, the um, act learning activity is captured into data. And, uh, and with multimodal learning analytics, we mainly deal with uh, sensor data. So for example, with a wearable device, we measure the heart rate of a learner during one day. 
and uh, in inspecting this data uh, visually is not very informative and can be quite complex as well. Um, so the good thing is that we can use computer algorithm uh, to make sense uh, of the data for us. So to make an example with two lines of code, it's possible to compute the average heart rate of the learner during the previous 24 hours, for example. And with more complex algorithm, you can discover relations uh, between different indicators or, uh, for example, between heart rate and attention or, or you can, you, that's where AI comes into play. So uh, interpreting raw data, finding correlation between variables and uh, learning this relationship uh, between the measurements and the learning performance or the learning goals. No, I get that. I'm stand sitting here and I feel, my God. This guy is so smart, so I'm going to use you. If you're an artificial intelligence specialist, well, right now I feel that artificial intelligence is just a buzzword that can describe everything, but you actually know what it is. Where, where you set that difference between, let's say, artificial intelligence and machine learning? Uh, I recently read a funny quote saying that you can recognize machine learning because it's usually written in Python programming language while uh, artificial intelligence is usually written in PowerPoint slides. And uh, on a more serious note, I believe machine learning uh, is just one aspect of artificial intelligence, similarly as human learning is one aspect of human intelligence. And machine learning is one at the core of uh, AI, of artificial intelligence. And, uh, and it's, I can describe it as the ability of the computer program of learning the relationship in the data and the ability also to make generalization so that this uh, can be used to uh, categorize and predict future uh, data, future outcomes. Um, in this way, the computer program can distinguish future data and uh, some ex pretty popular example are, for example, uh, image uh, classification and recognition or speech recognition. Dame, well, well, from what you're saying, I can uh, see, well, I, re I want to say, I really like the idea where, the, as you said at the beginning, that the machine learning is for Python and artificial intelligence is in PowerPoint. But uh, this indicates one very funny thing, that artificial intelligence is not just about algorithms. It's not about just machine learning algorithms that uh, you can write. It's about something else. There also the human factor that is probably also very influential in, in your area. Is it, is it true? Um, so the human factor, of course, it depends where artificial intelligence, which domain artificial intelligence is applied. Uh, so uh, uh, nowadays, AI is applied in many sectors, including uh, manufacturing, retail, automotive, uh, and so on. Uh, and in several of these domains, AI is, is even outperformed humans, uh, especially in those tasks that are uh, a closed and predictable environment, uh, which are simple to model. Think, for example, about uh, com computer games. Um, but uh, if you take more open-ended and unpredictable environments, uh, this is uh, much more complex for AI. And uh, human-led processes, uh, for example, at education and learning, those are um, more unpredictable environments. And their AI needs to interface with a human. Uh, and so f in this case, uh, building AI uh, software is much more uh, complex. And, but the good news is that nowadays with multimodal learning analytics, uh, wearable sensors and Internet of Things, it's possible to track uh, multiple modalities, uh, for example, biomechanic movements or physiological information. And, uh, and it's possible with this multimodal data to generate feedback and support learning. So my future vision is that we can combine uh, artificial intelligence with human intelligence, uh, actually support uh, human intelligence with AI in day-to-day -day tasks. So how would you combine it? So would you substitute all the teachers and tasks that are related for measuring the learning process for the human tutors into the machines? Or do you see any cooperation between artificial intelligence?
against machines and humans. Um, n no, I never talked about uh, replacing uh, teachers. That's not the aim. But uh, rather on creating personal tutors, uh, personal uh, intelligent tutors uh, for each of us that we can use at our own uh, uh, need and uh, uh, desire to optimize uh, our uh, life goals. And, and if you think about it, we already do that because uh, with certain uh, apps in our smartphone, for example, we can navigate uh, to a different location and they will tell us what street to take. Um, so, yeah, the future is somehow already now. Okay, okay. So let's assume I have a human teacher or human that can per measure the, my performance during learning and I have the machine that can do the task, the multimodal learning analytics machine. So why, why the machine would be better or on what tasks like this it would be better? So I have to be honest saying that I still believe that human tutoring is the most effective way to learn a skill. So if you take, for example, learning how to play a sport like a tennis, uh, the one-to-one -one tutoring with a human expert is the most effective way how to learn how to perform the right movements, for example, on how to achieve a good performance. But the problem is not often the personal uh, human tutor is available, and if it is available, it comes with a cost. So for this reason, I think that these personal intelligent tutors uh, can be a much more cheaper uh, substitute and they also have been proven to be uh, much uh, more effective than other instruction methods, uh, such as, for example, textbooks or lectures. And the reason uh, is because they provide real-time feedback to the learner, so they provide feedback on what to improve and uh, what to change. Um, so that's, uh, that's added value for the learner. Yeah, I, I, I see that. Uh, for example, right now I'm thinking about a situation when uh, I'm young and I'm presenting something and when I'm training and I'm not ready, I don't want to present in front of somebody else. Like, I'm shy if I'm supposed to present in front of computer and uh, he will teach, uh, like he will measure how I study presentation process and he can give me feedback. Well, that's completely anonymous. Yes, exactly. So. The sample you make is, uh, is really true. Sometimes you don't want to confront with other uh, humans. Uh, you want to have the space and time to uh, rehearse your presentation or practice a certain skill and make mistakes. Um, and uh, if you do that with a, with a, a computer, uh, you would probably not feel judged. Uh, so that's uh, an example where machine tutoring sometimes is even better than uh, <laughs> than human tutoring. Yeah. Okay. Then, yeah. Summing up, how do you see the technology of uh, multimodal learning analytics grow in the future years? Uh, I think that uh, the technologies that we have available are improving uh, uh, year by year. So we. Every year we have uh, new wearables or new API, uh, new uh, programming languages and technology and tools we can use. So I think the support for the community is improving. Um, but I, I think we need to make a step forward in imagining uh, artificial intelligence uh, uh, also as a tool, uh, not only for uh, you know learning how to play chess, but also how it can be used with uh, uh, to interface with human um, uh, with humans. So that is, I think, the future generation uh, AI. This uh, human AI, future ger generation of human AI, but with human teachers. I really like the idea that, well, the teachers still are better than machines, so uh, all, all teachers that are listening, you are safe. Okay, thank you for coming, and uh, for viewers, uh, if you like the video, uh, please uh, sure. follow. Ah, and uh, Daniela, if uh, somebody was interested in multimodal learning analytics or just your work, where, where, should you, where should I find you in the social media or in the internet?
Uh, sure, uh, you uh, probably just Google my name, Daniele Dimitri, <laughs> and uh, you will find uh, plenty of resources uh, such as uh, slide shares uh, or uh, um, articles that I've published with my colleagues. And, uh, and please feel free to get in touch with me if you're interested in this topic because there's plenty of, uh, we are plenty of interesting ideas and most of the time don't have uh, resources and time to do them all. But uh, we are really looking forward to people that share our passion to, to work together. Yes. All Thank right. you. Thank you very much. Thank you.